everything happen for a reason, and uh, I know everything is going to turn the way I want to. Elvis, how does that feel? It feels Two times. good. It feels good. I guess. I mean, I guess I mean I did something good today. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT and T, Ubers TV. A nice crowd filing into Globe Life Park here this afternoon under partly cloudy skies. It's another warm and humid afternoon here in North Texas as the Rangers get set to try and make it two in a row over the Minnesota Twins. And welcome in everyone along with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us for this uh, late matinee, if you will, Ranger baseball on this Saturday afternoon. Rangers coming off a 6-2 to two win last night, and they are turning the ball over this afternoon to their veteran right-hander. That would be Colby Lewis. Well, Buzz, you always feel good when Colby Lewis is starting a ball game. He hasn't pitched well against the Twins, though. In fact, he's never beaten the Twins. The thing that makes you feel good about this start is how he's pitched in his last two starts. He's 1-0 in his last two starts, coming off a couple of strong ball games, pitching at home, trying to get something going here for the Rangers against the Twins and beat them for the first time. Yeah, and as soon as somebody says to Colby Lewis, you haven't done something, <laughs> Colby kind of gets it uh, right in the middle of his chest and says, I will this time. So hopefully today will be the day that he gets his first W against the Minnesota Twins. We'll come back to Globe Live Park starting lineups and first pitch right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best-selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, Uverse TV. Uverse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. By Bud Light. Stay in the game and drink responsibly. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. 
That'll be a nice Saturday afternoon crowd under uh, partly cloudy skies and puffy white clouds drifting overhead. And before we get things started, let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, Buzz, the Rangers starting to put things together here at home. Winners of six of their last seven. Obviously, that was not the case in the month of April. But Delino DeShield says it's something they focused on and take great pride in. I think we've been playing with a lot of energy. Uh, I think we've bought into the fact that we got to protect our house and, you know, play well at home, just not on the road. And uh, I think we, you know, after the first month, you know, losing home in front of our fans, it kind of, I don't know, kind of looked back on it and it was like, this is not how it's supposed to be. And I think it goes without saying that every team would like to win every game, both home and on the road, but we all know that's not going to happen. But you can tell that these guys taking great pride in the product that they put out here at home because they want to reward the fans for coming out and supporting them, not only the way they have this season, uh, but in seasons past, guys. All right, Emily, thank you. Yeah, good point. So uh, they certainly have been rewarding the fans lately, and uh, that is a key for the Rangers. Well, Colby Lewis out to the hill, and uh, Tom will tell you now about the Amica Minnesota Twins lineup that he will face this afternoon. Well, the Twins will start off with their second baseman, Brian Dozier, one of the best leadoff hitters in baseball. Eddie Rosario gets the start, bats second in right field. Joe Maurer is the DH. Trevor Plouffe bats fourth. He's the third baseman. Kenny Vargas is at first base. Eduardo Nunez is getting the start at shortstop, batting seventh. The catcher, Chris Herman. The left fielder batting eighth, Eduardo Escobar, and batting ninth, the center fielder, Shane Robinson. And that lineup will be facing the 35-year-old right-hander from Bakersfield, California, Big Colby Lewis. And our progressive scatter report on Colby, he has been as steady year in and year out, game in and game out, as uh, any Ranger pitcher, fastball, slider combo. And uh, if he has command of both those, that should play very well against a rather aggressive Minnesota lineup that uh, has three left-handers and one switch hitter in it. So Colby uh, seeing more right-handers in this lineup, and that plays right into his hands with that uh, good slider when he has command of it. And we'll take a look at the uh, defense behind Colby Lewis this afternoon. It's presented to you by Fred Loya Insurance. Outfield, very familiar to you by now. The Shields, Martin and Chu, left, center, and right. Marlin at first, Alberto and Andrews up the middle. Joey Gallo to start at third, and Robinson Torinos is behind the plate. Well, the Rangers come in, trailing uh, by two and a half games in the American League West. They are still in second place. Been gaining ground, uh, Jeff Bannister's club. Sneaking up on Houston. Houston uh, finally won a game last night, so the Rangers uh, maintaining a two and a half game deficit. Rangers 12 and 15 here at home this year, but as Emily told you, they won six of the last seven. Here's Brian Dozier to get things underway, and the first pitch is hit on one tricky hop to Joey Gallo. Nice play by the young third baseman. Well, Joey seems to get a lot of those tricky hops in the short time he's been here, and he's coming up with them, too. Not a simple hop, not a necessarily a hard-hit smash, but a tricky hop. He's playing in with Dozier up there. Dozier tried to hit it by him. Here's a good view of it in the hop that he had to play. So one pitch and one away, thanks to uh, Joey Gallo's good glove over there. Now Eddie Rosario, the right fielder, takes strike one. The uh, Twins had to make a last-minute change in their lineup. Originally, Torrey Hunter was penciled in to uh, play in right field with Rosario and left, but Torrey Hunter decided to go ahead and uh, serve the two-game suspension that was handed down to him for his outburst uh, this last week. And so Torrey Hunter not available to Paul Molitor. And they had to uh, make several changes. A swinging strike three. There's that good back foot slider by Colby Lewis. There are two gone. Yeah, the thing that's going to work in Colby's favor today if he has his good stuff. A lot of young, inexperienced hitters in the lineup. And when we've said that Colby hasn't beaten the Twins before, hasn't faced this lineup either. And they've had different lineups every time Colby's faced them. And this is a young, inexperienced lineup. And if he's got his breaking balls working, he might see a little bit of that today. The swing at the pitch out of the strike zone. Oh, two up, two away. Here's the veteran Joe Maurer handling DH chores this afternoon, and Colby firing strike one. But the Twins originally with uh, Torrey Hunter in right field, 
they've gone to uh, Eduardo Nunez, the shortstop, uh, and Eduardo Escobar, who was originally going to play short, moved out to left with Rosario moving from left to right. And boy, the uh, Twins now really in dire straits with uh, Aaron Hicks shelved uh, this afternoon. He was uh, scratched from the lineup, some soreness. They have one healthy player on the bench, and that's Kurt Suzuki. So don't look for a lot of pinch hitting and uh, pinch running this afternoon by Paul Molitor. Yeah, evidently with Torrey Hunter, he, he came to the ballpark not feeling well today and maybe couldn't have played anyway. And so then it appeared to be a good time to go ahead and take the suspension at a time when he couldn't play anyway. Otherwise, I think if he was totally healthy, he might have waited with only a catcher as your only extra yeah. man today. That's that's really I don't know the last time I saw a big league team start a game with only one healthy <laughs> reserve, and that's the that's a catcher. Yeah. Maurer hits it well to center field, retreating and now stopping. Jonas Martin camps under it, puts it away, and that'll do it. Three up, three down. Colby Lewis sends the Twins packing. After a half inning of play, no score. Tom's going to tell you about the Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers lineup. Milano well, DeShields leads off. Shinsu Chu bat second. Prince Fielder, the DH, is third. Mitch Moreland again in the cleanup spot. Joey Gallo, the third baseman, is batting fifth. Elvis Andrews, fresh off four RBIs in last night's game, is the shortstop. Leonis Martin is seventh in center field. The catcher, batting eighth, is Robinson Chirinos. And the second baseman, Hanser Alberto, bats ninth. And that batting order will be facing the 31-year-old uh, veteran Mike Pelfrey, hard-throwing right-hander, big guy at 6'7", about 240 pounds. And uh, our scouting report on Pelfrey, he's having a good year. He's finally healthy as far as the Twins are concerned. A very heavy, sinking fastball, a bunt by the Shields. Nice play by Plouffe to get it. Now, Trevor Plouffe, great anticipation, got a good jump coming in. And the Shields caught trying to get that butt down for a hit. You can see where Plouffe is on the grass in front of the bag. Good anticipation and a good strong throw. So Delino out to start things, and now Shinsu Chu will step in. And finishing that scouting report, that uh, good sinking fastball, a lot of uh, a lot of ground balls, also a, an above average changeup, which he's used to great effect against left-handed hitters in particular. He's been on a roll his last four starts. So the Rangers hitters try to get him out of his rhythm. He likes to work quickly. Get the ball and fire it. And there's a base hit to center. That'll break his rhythm a little bit. Shinsu Chu with a one-out single. Oh, with Chu on first. Uh, Prince Fielder coming up. Let's take a look at the Minnesota defense this, uh, this afternoon behind Mike Belfry. 
outfield with uh, Escobar in left field, uh, Robinson in center, Rosario in right, Vargas at first, Dozier and Nunez up the middle, Trevor Plouffe at third, and Chris Herman is behind the plate this afternoon. A one-on, one-out, Chu at first for Prince Fielder. Fielder still leading the American League with a 346 average. That despite, uh, for him, falling on hard times. He's hit less than 300 lately, which is headlines in itself. Pitch outside for ball one. 255 for its average in his last 15 ball games. And I don't think it's any accident that coincides with uh, not having a very hot Adrian Beltre hitting behind him. And again, that's no knock on Mitch Moreland. Moreland has uh, done a great job. But when you have two left-handed hitters hitting back-to-back -back and Fielder has the reputation that he does, Mitch Moreland is going to see more opportunities than Prince is to drive in runs. And Mitch has responded pretty well. Prince has three home runs against Pelfrey, 25 at bats. Pelfrey's only given up three home runs this year. That's a base hit to center off the umpire, and it's a dead ball. The dead ball, everybody's going to be safe. Second base umpire, Clint Fagan, tells you how hard that ball is hit. He just could not get that back foot out of the way. Well, the base runners probably end up in the same place they would have been. Had not hit ball, where Shane Robinson, center field, probably could have gotten to it quickly enough to keep Chu from going to third base anyway. That's when you wish it would hit the umpire when they've got a defensive player positioned right back at second <laughs> yeah, base. Yeah, exactly. There was nobody there. That ball was going into center field anyway. Exactly. So, back to back singles, two on with one out. And Mitch Moreland, and Mitch came to the ballpark today figuring that he took an 0 for 4 in last night's game, although that, that has changed. Uh, we got received word here about 20 minutes ago that Will Rudd, the official scorer, had uh, changed his decision on the ball that Mitch Moreland hit in last night's eighth inning. It was ruled a two-base error on Aaron Hicks. And no RBIs, and Mitch uh, was given a double and two RBIs. So that batting average now up to 307 instead of being dragged down to 300, which is where it would have been well, had he taken nice, it over. That's a nice little present when you get to the ballpark. Seven points on your batting average and a couple of extra RBIs. Yeah. The slow curveball from uh, Mike Pelfrey. It was a tough call for the scorekeeper last night. It was a smash. He couldn't hit a line drive any harder than that. But Aaron Hicks got a good jump on it ran it down and then missed it and I think he could make a case either way he got to it he could have caught it but evidently the fact that it was hit so hard and that he had a ways to go to catch it overruled the original call now Mitch gets the double a couple of RBIs and good for him one one pitch two balls and a strike we'll take you back and show you that play from last night eighth inning a tie ball game Aaron Hicks just had that ball go right off the top of his glove, right at the thumb. And looked like initially that uh, he had slowed up just a little bit to make the catch, but he was determined further that, you know, that was just, that was too tough a play to consider it a normal effort that didn't get the job done. Now the 2 1 pitch. Hicks said after the game that he couldn't believe he didn't catch it. He catches that ball every time. He's a very good defensive player yeah. in center field. Has good instincts out there, speed. That was just one that he thought he should catch. He just didn't catch it. And the Rangers, if he's going to miss one very infrequently, are glad it happened against them in that key situation late in the ballgame. Now that hit was with the bases loaded last night. Mitch up there with Chew at second, fielder at first here in the first inning. Belfry, a long look back at second. And misses just inside to Mitch Moreland. That fills the count. See how close that last pitch to Mitch was. Tried the comeback fastball. Came back. Didn't get the call. Now it'd be interesting to see where he goes on the 3-2 pitch. He's got a really good changeup. Will he risk it on 3-2? and two? Or will he go with his hard sinker? Belfry ready. 
And the payoff pitch coming. Mitch sporting a pretty good fastball away. Belfry has uh, undergone a couple of uh, elbow surgeries. First one, uh, normal Tommy John surgery, and then uh, about two years later, 2012, had to have the area cleaned out around his ulnar nerve. Had some scar tissue uh, as a result of the, the first surgery. Dr. Andrews down in Alabama did that. And he's come back throwing very well now. Another 3-2 pitch coming. One hopper, Dozier to second. Can they turn it over? They do. Now Mitch kind of got jammed on that pitch inside in a little one hopper that the Twins turned a pair on. After one, no score in Arlington. Your Ragers just subscribe to MLB.TV Premium for live or on demand viewing on over 400 devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking, and a lot more. Blackouts and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Colby Lewis to the hill, starting off the top of the second inning. Trevor Plouffe, after that foul ball, now finds himself down in an 0 2 hole. Plouffe, Vargas, and Nunez, the first three twins to do the swinging against Colby. Trevor Plouffe at 251 average, nine home runs, and 33 RBI. Colby back to the plate. And a line drive to right center. That is going to plug the gap over to cut it off Chu, and it gets by him to the wall. Plouffe to second, and he will stop there. Well, the first base runner of the afternoon for the Twins is Trevor Plouffe. Going to rock it into right center field for the double. And Kobe going for the outside part of the plate on the 0-2 pitch. Got it on the outside part, maybe not as far outside as he wanted it, but Plouffe hit it very well into right center field. Chu laid back on the ball, missed it. Probably would have been a double. I don't know. He could have got it in quickly enough to keep Plouffe from going to second base. Well, Plouffe with his 11th two-bagger of the year. Well, he is in scoring position. Nobody out. And, uh, Kines Vargas fouls that first pitch off. Vargas uh, handled the DH chores last night. He's getting the start first today. Big guy. He goes 6'5 and about 260 pounds or so. Switch hitter. Up there from the left side against Colby Lewis. An excuse me, check swing roller. And Gallo right, checking right. Plouffe back to third. And that is out number one with Plouffe staying in 
second base. And let's go check in with Jim Knox right here. All right, Buzz, in center field, the bow tire, and a real treat for Ranger fans on a day like this. Casey, what do we have? Well, for those fans that are over 21, I have a frozen beer. We're only one of two Major League ballparks that carry this. It's Kieran Ichiban. You pour a beer and then put frozen beer foam on top of it. you got to try it out in this heat. Very nice, and that is here in center field. Let's give this to one lucky Ranger fan, this big talker over here. Here you go, big guy. You are 21. Okay, there you go. Hey, listen, watching the Rangers during the summer, there's nothing better than cold beer and anti-monkey button, those khakis. I know you. There you go. All right, all right. Have fun, big guy. There you go. Yeah, Colby Lewis with a breaking ball in the dirt, and it's going to be a wild pitch as uh, the ball kind of ran up. Robinson Torino's arm off his glove and uh, now that gets Bloof over to third. He's there with one out. And he chose to try to backhand it as opposed to getting his glove down and letting it hit off his chest. Kicked off his glove. Rangers play the infield in now with Nunez up there. Nunez hitting at an even 300. Colby from the stretch. And a chopper to second. That's not going to get proof home as Panzer Alberto makes the play. Well, that's the second time in the last several games the Rangers have uh, had that success with the infield in, where they've gotten the out without the run scoring. Yeah, I wish Reddick hit the same ball in Oakland. Yeah. Reddick, well, he did hit the same ball, just a little too far to the left of Adam Rosales. Wouldn't hit very hard, but proved to be the game winner in Oakland. No, well, two outs now. Infield back to normal depth. And Chris Herman, the catcher, steps in. Herman hitting at 174. First pitch to him. A good breaking ball for strike one. Herman from Tomball, Texas. Went to uh, Alvin Community College for a year, then transferred down to the University of Miami for his collegiate uh, career. Just off the outside corner. Colby taking a little bit off the fastball. Something Colby has been doing a little more frequently of late. That's uh, change speeds with the fastball. Not a true changeup. Not to where it's six, seven, eight miles an hour difference, but uh, maybe two or three miles an hour difference. And with better control, Colby feels like uh, when he doesn't possess the good fastball or one that he feels is the good fastball that day, he backs off a little bit. That's, Tom, what you and I have talked about, about pitchers that instead of trying to get more out of what they have, they, they get more results by doing less with it, by going softer. Would you say that that would be a trait that a veteran pitcher would yeah. share more than a younger pitcher? Very definitely. You know, it takes a lot of courage to stand out there and not throw your best fastball <laughs> intentionally. That pitch inside and a hit, Herman. No, it... Hit batter with two outs, and then I'll put runners at the corners for Escobar. And ahead in the count, trying to come in with a hard breaking ball, going for a strikeout right there. And you see where it hits, right in the back of the foot. That is a true back foot breaking ball. Sure was. Yeah, that's too bad for Colby. Got a two strike count on Herman, and. Uh, just nicked his toe. So runners at first and third. Eduardo Escobar. With Trevor Plouffe down there at third base. Escobar, a 233 average. A switch hitter up there from the left side. And Colby drops in strike one. Colby throwing a lot of strikes. 16 out of 21. Three home runs for Escobar and 21 RBI. Very versatile player in all three outfield positions and saw him at shortstop. Matter of fact, he's been at shortstop uh, the last seven or eight starts for him. Center field not hit very sharply, and it's going to be an easy play for Leonis Martin. On the side retired, Cole be able to work around the leadoff double. Twin strand two. After one and a half, we have no score.
is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best-selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. Now, a warm, muggy afternoon out here at uh, Globe Live Park. Rangers uh, and Twins in this uh, matinee affair on a Saturday afternoon. Nice crowd on hand. Looks to be in the neighborhood of 30,000 or so. Had a real good crowd last night at 41,000 to uh, see the opener. And they saw the Rangers come back and run off with a 6-2 to two win. Joey Gallo to start things off against Mike Pelfrey here in the second inning. And the big right-hander misses outside for ball one. Gallo, a 286 average with two home runs, five driven in. He has hit safely in seven of his first nine major league games. He's made quite an impression on the Rangers and their fans. There's a strike. Both uh, Joey Gallo and Hanser Alberto coming up to. Oops. <laughs> don't see that very often. No, you don't. That's the old phantom pitch. I'd like to see that one. Man on third base. Yeah. In a tie game in the ninth inning. So now that's that's having a second thought pretty late. I think I'll change my mind. I'll probably call it a strike. <laughs> <laughs> That's fouled back one and two. That's Bob Davidson calling the balls and strike back there. If it had been a balk, now he would have called it. <laughs> balk and Bob Davidson. They've been to a little league game and a pitcher does that with no one on and the fans yell, "That's yeah, a balk!" Yeah. <laughs> There's Bob back there. One-two pitch. That will even things up. Joey brought up from double A Frisco. As a matter of fact, he was on the verge of being promoted to triple A when the call for him became necessary. Adrian Beltre going on the disabled list. That's a bit low. And the count is full. So Gallo trying to get aboard to start off this Ranger second. He'll be followed by the shortstop Elvis Andrews. Tried to tempt him with a couple of changeups and couldn't do it. Now the payoff pitch coming. Outside ball four. Well, Gallo showing you a pretty good eyeball at the plate. Yeah, let's go down and check in with Emily Jones. Em? Well, you guys talked about Joey Gallo and how quickly he spit in here at the big league level. And the way you can really tell that in the clubhouse is if you're playing uh, FIFA World Cup soccer in the uh, Giovanni Gallardo Derek Holland locker area. And uh, he's found his way over there. So Joey fitting in just fine in the clubhouse. <laughs> Yeah, if you ever walk through the clubhouse and hear some screams just coming out of nowhere, it, there's soccer going on somewhere over there. Well, in the old days, real old days, the rookies couldn't get into those kind of games. <laughs> Back then it was probably hearts, spades, yep. maybe a little poker. But if the veterans were playing, the rookies weren't. Not that they didn't accept the rookies, but it took a while before you could get into the card games. Here's Elvis. His third home run of the year last night was a big one. It put the Rangers on top two to one in the seventh inning. Takes a strike here. Elvis at 239. Three home runs, 24 runs driven in down. That four RBI he got last night to the high water mark of his career. So far. Got some more in him. He keeps hitting in power producing spots in the uh, lineup. He may just uh, blast those RBI totals right out of the boat. Elvis checking with Tony Beasley down there at third. One ball, one strike. Joey Gallo, the runner at first. Another thing Elvis has done is he's only made one error in the last 14 games. He a little careless early in the year, but cleaning that up in the last two weeks. Also been making some highlight reel defensive plays. Yeah. In addition to the routine ones to go along with it. Yeah, he's gotten his jump throw in uh, midseason form the number of times he's had to use it. Yeah. Belfry okays the sign, a check of Gallo. Gallo's on the move, a hit and run on, and a bouncer didn't quite get by Dozier. He was able to reverse his field 
in time to throw out Elvis, but Gallo now in scoring position at second with one out. Well, that was almost a first and third and nobody out. The second baseman is covering, but the ball's not quite far enough to the first base side and he's able to react to it. He also waited as long as he could before he went to cover second base. Turned into an easy play for him. Wasn't hit that hard either. The one gone now. Leonis Martin steps in with an opportunity to get the Rangers on the board with a base hit. And uh, Leonis has been doing this very well of late. Hitting with runners in scoring position. Takes a strike here. Martin seven for his last 16 times to the plate. With runners in scoring position. That's a 438 average. Overall, that average uh, on the rise at an even 250 now. It's that one in the right field, a base hit. Around third comes Gallo. The throw is cut off, and Gallo will score. Martin gets it done again, and the Rangers lead it 1 0. Well, he ripped that ball. He's really swinging the bat well. He's nine games in June coming into the game. He's hitting 375. Looked like a changeup that he got. A high pitch right down the middle of the plate. He waited on it and just ripped that ball down the right field. No, a walk. And now a one out single. And yeah, the Rangers have the lead. Now Martin with 11 stolen bases is at first base with one out. Robinson Chirinos takes the first pitch from Pelfrey in for strike one. Chirinos hit just 192 with five home runs, 23 driven in. Robinson uh, battling an 0 for 11 streak that he finds himself in at the moment. It's been kind of an offensive roller coaster for Chirinos. Back to the mound, Belfry to second, and they're going to turn it over as Nunez fires on to first. Well, that'll do it. Rangers out in the second, but they score a run on a hit, and nobody left after two. Rangers. nothing over the Minnesota Twins and I am here to tell you about a very very special promotion one that I can really get behind on July 29th the Rangers are hosting a special wine tasting event fans 21 and older invited to sample wines from a number of different producers including Gallo Constellation Brands Vineyards of Florence and more and in addition to wine tasting the event includes a buffet and a ticket for the game against the Yankees for more information, visit TexasRangers.com slash wine to purchase. I still can't figure out why our producer, EJ, gave that copy to me to read, guys. 
<laughs> I don't know him. We'll, uh, we'll launch an what, investigation to see once, if we can find out. As soon as I turn 21, I'll be able to participate in that event. There you go. <laughs> well, he's giving you something to look forward to. Absolutely. Yeah. Meanwhile, Shane Robinson smacking one back up the middle that uh, you saw Colby knocked down, not able to get it over to first in time. So Robertson has a base hit. And now back to the top of the Minnesota order or Brian Dozier. And ball one is low. Yeah, that was when Kobe reached behind his back to block that ball. Almost caught it. If he missed it, probably would have been an easy play for Elvis. Dozier, as he led things off this afternoon, hit a tough one hopper that Joey Gallo made a nice play on. Pops this one straight back toward us. A little bit short, but it's in our general direction. In case you were listening to Emily and didn't didn't pay attention to the fancy glove work by Colby, he just didn't get it to drop down by his feet and went too far away from him. And then he had a pretty quick runner running to first base and couldn't quite get it there in time. Slower runner would have been an easy play. A one ball and one strike to Brian Dozier. Good slider. One and two. That's that the variety of breaking ball we were talking about uh, when we previewed uh, what Colby had featured today that he has commanded that he is very tough on right handers. Just outside two and two. Colby has pitched very well here at home this year too. extra base. Leaders in the American League our four leaderboard shows you Brian Dozier out in front of the pack with 33 extra base hits and the rest of that list Josh Donaldson one behind Mike Trout you know, and Cespedes and uh, Jason Kipnis and Mark Teixeira all with 28. Three and two nobody out we'll see if Shane Robinson is uh, set free at first base. He's on the move. The pitch is low. Ball four. And the crowd excited because uh, Robinson Chirinos made a good throw to second. But all for naught. The walk puts runners at first and second with nobody out. And Eddie Rosario. Well, he didn't get the call, but that pitch, sure, according to Fox Tracks, was a lot better than it looked like where Robinson caught it. That ball was all the way in the strike zone. That could have been one of those pitches where the catcher just comes up a little bit and blocks the umpire's view for the last part of the pitch. Robinson didn't stand straight up to early, but uh, just enough to where Davidson couldn't see the ball all the way into his glove, so he called it a ball. Left center field, that is slicing between them and off the wall, off the bat of Eddie Rosario. One run is home. Here comes Dozier around third. The throw is late. So on to third goes Rosario. And Rosario has turned the game around. The Twins lead it two to one. Yeah, there's no play at the plate, but Rosario was going to third when the cutoff man caught the ball. Would have been an easy out at third base, especially when there was no play at the plate. Fastball center of the plate, Rosario. Showing a little bit of power the other way. Hits it all the way to the base of the wall. See right here, Rosario is already rounded second going to third and definitely no play at the plate. No, a double with Rosario taking third on the throw. And now Joe Maurer lines one deep to left center. Long run over. For DeShields, who makes a tumbling catch and it falls out of his glove. Goes to the wall, and Leonis there to pick it up. In to score, though, Rosario. And into second is Joe Maurer. That is a double, and uh, maybe a little miscommunication out there. It looked like the line of DeShields was trying to get out of the way at the last second. Yeah, that one was hit well, but it looked like it hung up there long enough 
for someone to make a play on it. Let's see if we can see what happened. No, he was just going to the ground, wasn't he? Yeah, well, it looked like a play that. It's hard to say. I, I don't. It didn't look like Leonis took charge on that ball. I don't think he was yelling for it. Otherwise, Delano might have been able to get out of the way. One of those in between balls. Either one of them could have caught it if the other one wasn't there. Now, in any event, it goes down as an RBI double for Joe Mauer. And just like that, the uh, Twins have taken a three to one lead. And there's still nobody out here in the third. Well, it's been an infield single, a walk, and then back-to-back -back RBI doubles, or run-producing doubles. The first one drove in two. Trevor Plouffe at the plate. And a little tardy with that swing. It is nothing in two. Plouffe double to right center. His first time up there. Colby a check of Mauer at second, and he gets Plouffe on the high fastball. That is out number one, and the second strikeout for Colby Lewis. Up above the uh, top of the strike zone by quite a bit. Plouffe not able to get on top of it. No one gone, Mauer still out at second. Kenny's Vargas. The first baseman up there. Slow breaking ball for strike one. I can give you a phantom cam look at that. Just ticking the top of the bat. There's uh, Plouffe firing the bat head through the strike zone. One and one now to Vargas. He grounded out to third in the second inning. Colby Lewis, who went to the mound with a 1-0 lead, has uh, run into problems here, and he's trying to put the brakes on the twin uprising. 2-1 to Vargas. Vargas in last night's game, an 0-4. for 4. He finds himself now on an 0-7 for 7 streak. Mauer getting his lead at second, right there at the bottom of your screen. In the dirt, three and one now. Nice view from our RF camera right there at the top of the lower seating bowl. Three and one with one out. Vargas is kind of an oddity. A big guy like this, you figure he'd be comfortable anywhere in the middle of the lineup, but he hits much better batting sixth or seventh, at least statistically, than he does hitting fourth or fifth. That's out of play. This year, he's a 310 hitter when he's batting sixth or seventh. Put him up in the fourth or fifth spot, he's hit 192. He's a guy that may at this moment put a little too much pressure on himself when he's uh, in the middle of that order. So Paul Molitor for the most part keeping him out of that uh, middle spot. 3-2 pitch from Colby. <laughs> Twins coming into play this afternoon have lost four straight. They are only won three of their last ten ball games. Still trailing the Kansas City Royals by a couple of games in the American League Central. Another 3-2 pitch is on the way. Call strike three. And Colby got the inside corner. Vargas caught window shopping. That is out number two. And before Eduardo Nunez comes up, we're going to send it over to Aaron Hardigan for a Mazda game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. 
Astros returning the favor. They scored big <laughs> yesterday. Eight runs off Felix Hernandez in the first inning. Yeah, Felix got what do you get two outs in the first inning? Something like yeah. that. Well, oh, he didn't get uh, didn't get through the inning. Eduardo Nunez, a ground ball to second, his first time to the plate. Mauer at second with two outs, and the pitch is a strike. Nothing in two. So Colby forced to work overtime here in this second inning. Not quite close enough to get Nunez to offer. One ball, two strikes. Mauer, the second of consecutive RBI doubles for the Twins in this inning. Eddie Rosario had the first, a, a two-run double. And Mauer brought him home with his two-bagger. But then back-to-back -back strikeouts, Plouffe and Vargas. And Colby just about uh, on the verge of shutting the door to any more scoring. Got him swinging. Now Colby comes back to strike out three consecutive after giving up three runs. Twins, three runs on three hits. They strand one after two and a half. 3-1 Minnesota. And the first 25,000 fans at the game on Tuesday will receive an MLB Network tote bag. Visit TexasRangers.com or call 972 Rangers to get your tickets. Dodgers in for two on Monday and Tuesday, and then the Rangers uh, play in LA on Wednesday and Thursday. That home and home that has become a, a part of the uh, interleague schedule for most teams. Hanser Alberto starting off the Ranger third inning. Me, Alberto, then back to the top of the order, Delano to Shields and Shinsu Chu. Belfry gets another ground ball. This one right at the second baseman, Dozier, for out number one. Fielder, Delano, the Shields. So, true to form, uh, Belfry has not had an out in the air this afternoon. All seven of them have been the result of uh, ground balls. A couple of double plays they have helped him out. Delino to Shields tried to bunt his way aboard to start things for the Rangers and uh, a nice play by the third baseman Plouffe to throw him out. One ball no strikes. Delino now the average at uh, 259. Two and nothing. That average Taking a tumble the last uh, seven or eight ball games for the Shields. And excuse me, check swing. That's going to be extra bases. Down the right field line. Over to pick it out of the corner. 
is Rosario. And, uh, well, when you're having trouble offensively, you need something good to happen. Check your swing. Couldn't be much better than that. And the line of four for 28 in the last seven games. That'll help your average. Check your swing. Get an extra base hit. Eight doubles this year. Whoops. Like he tried to do that. Yeah, it did. No, now to Shields at second with one out. Shin Su Chu, who had a single to center his first time up, will step in. That base hit for Chu snapped an 0 for 9 that he had been mired in. One ball, no strikes. Go back uh, for Shinsu Chu about the same length of time for as for Deliner to Shields. They've both been struggling, and Chu a 172 average over those seven games. Change up floats high and wide. Two balls, no strikes. The Pelfrey's been struggling a little bit. The two double plays have bailed him out. He's thrown 34 pitches, 18 strikes, 16 balls. But when you're a ground ball pitcher, that's a nice weapon to have. You get the ground ball when you need it. He's had it twice. Prince Fielder keeping an eye on things from the on deck circle. The 2 0 pitch coming from Pelfrey. Sliced out of play deep down the left side, but well back into the seats. Two and one to Chu. Jinsu with that. Single his first time up. Now the average back up over the 240 mark. 242 as he faces Pelfrey here. Right hander, a couple of looks back to second. And uh, with Nunez breaking in behind the Shields, Pelfrey stepped off. When you get your shortstop out of position like that, when he's trying to give you an option to pick a guy off or whatever, you can't make a pitch. You got to make sure that. You step off so there's not a huge hole at the uh, vacated shortstop spot. There's a throw back there now, and they almost got him. You got an idea what DeShields was doing. He was taking it, creeping away with each look that Pelfrey had back there. Watch him creep out there. Yeah, luckily he's got some quickness because that was a perfect throw, and a lot of guys would have been out if they had the same lead. Chris Herman, the catcher, out to uh, talk to Pelfrey. You don't want to take any chances at second base now. You've got Chu up there, Fielder, and Mitch coming up. Down by a couple of runs. Last thing you want is someone get picked off second base right now. Paul Molitor was uh, telling Bob Davidson, the whole umpire, hold it up just a second. I want to take a look at the uh, replay, which they did. Upstairs in the Twins clubhouse, and Molitor uh, satisfied that the play wasn't that close. Now the two-one pitch, spun him around with that inside fastball. Pretty close from that angle. Yep. First angle we saw, it didn't look like there was any doubt that he got back, but it was a close play. Sinking in front of Rosario is down for a base hit. Being waved around third now. Here comes the Shields. He is in for the head first slide. Some great base running and a good job down at third. Picking up the third base coach by the Shields. He just kept right on going. He had stopped because there was some doubt whether the right fielder was going to catch it. So he's watching the ball in right field. He doesn't think he can score, but the right fielder throws the ball into the second baseman, and Tony Beasley waved him right around. Delina was going to stop at third base. He didn't think there was any way he could score, and there wouldn't have been any way if the right fielder had thrown the ball in hard and quickly, but he kind of threw it in anticipating he was going to stay at third, and Tony waved him right around. Well, it's a 3-2 game, and his fielder back up the middle again. Chu around second. He will motor into third. And back come the Rangers. 
Both Chu and Fielder now two for two. It's almost a carbon copy of his uh, base hit first time up right back through the middle and hit so hard that nobody could react to it. You now the Twins put together a streak of uh, four consecutive hitters reaching base in the third for a couple of runs Ranger for three runs. The Rangers have had a streak of three consecutive reaching base for a run here and looking for more with Mitch Moreland up there. He drives one to left field. Back is Escobar. It's over his head and off the wall at the base of the wall. Fielder going to third. Moreland into second. In to score is two. And we've got a brand new ball game. Escobar must have lost that ball or lost track of where he was in relation to the wall. I couldn't tell if he did that or whether he was whether he was trying to keep the runners from moving on the play, whether he actually played it that way. I thought he was going to catch it the way he was facing toward the hitter. And then all of a sudden he turned around and played it off the wall. Let's see if we can tell better from this angle whether he lost the ball. I think he just lost it, Buzz. I don't think he ever actually knew where it was. I don't know that Sun would be a problem right now on a high ball like that. Not sure exactly what happened to him. Well, he's got his sunglasses on now. They were on top of his hat, so the maybe, maybe the TC is. on his bill on his hat were uh, well covered from the sun. And maybe that glare had something to do with it. It looks like he's underneath it right here, and then he goes to play it off the wall, hit the bottom of the wall. If he'd gone back to the wall, he could have caught it. Could have caught the ball standing there. I guess he just misjudged the ball, didn't know where it was in relationship to the wall. Well, it's a tie ball game now. Mitch Moreland credited with an RBI double. And with Joey Gallo up there, Twins are raising the ire of the crowd here at Globe Live Park. They're walking Gallo to load the bases for Elvis Andrews. Well, Elvis had the four runs batted in last night, but if you're the Twins, You'll take a shot here with the bases loaded, hoping you can get a ground ball. He's all, they've already turned two double plays. And so if you're Elvis right here, you want to see if you can't maybe get the ball in the air rather than hit it on the ground. Well, Gallo draws his second walk, first intentional walk. And it loads him up now. Fielder at third, Moreland at second, Gallo at first. Paul Molitor telling his infielders exactly where he wants them to uh, position themselves. Elvis, a ground ball to second, his first time to the plate. Career-wise, with the bases full, a 355 average for Andrews. At first, I thought Escobar was playing it that way, making it look like he was going to catch it, and then playing it high off the wall. Then it looked like he misjudged it, and when he turned around, the ball hit the bottom of the wall. Elvis, a ground ball, backhanded by Plouffe. The throw across the diamond, and they got it. Mm. The one pitch, the 5-3 double play, the third double play this afternoon turned for the Twins. Rangers all come back with two runs to tie it. They strand two, and after three, 3-3 three, three the score.
brought to you by the Texas Department of Transportation. Well, it has been a kind of a wild and crazy first three innings here at Globe Life Park. A 3-3 ball game. Colby Lewis back out for the fourth. And first ball swinging, Chris Herman lofts a fly ball to left. Coming together, the liner to Shields and uh, Leon's Martin, they team up to make the catch. One gone. And uh, joining us now, the doctor of defense. We could use a little defense, Mac, or at least some explanations. Mark McLemore joining us. <laughs> yes, we what could. What in the world is going on? <laughs> Just not, not no communication. I, I think that's really what it is, especially in the outfield. You've got to communicate. You've got yeah. to know where one another is. Center field's got to know the left fielder, you know, where he's playing at. And hey, if you're gonna, if you've got to run 30 steps, you've got to know that guy with just as much speed as you is coming your way as well. <laughs> you have to know. So, just communication. That, that, that's really what it is. Well, Eduardo Escobar, the left yeah, You saw the Escobar play, the the ball that went over his head and hit the bottom of the wall. I did. What did you glean from that as he grounds out the first? I just think he didn't really know where he was on the field. This is his first time that he's played here, so uh, and I think he's also been playing a little bit shallow, especially the guys with power that can hit it over his head like that and mm -hmm. hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, he was playing a little bit in last night as well, so uh, just not knowing where he was. Not realizing the ball is going to carry, especially it's hot today. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's going to go a little bit further than you'd expect. Yeah, when, when, when Torrey Hunter couldn't play today, Escobar, who's mainly played in the infield. I, I don't think he's played the outfield very often. And he he had plenty of time to catch it. He just I think he just misjudged that ball. Just as you said, Mac didn't know where he was. We'll take you back to that play. It ended up being a, an RBI double for Mitch Moreland to tie the game. Yeah, right here. It looks like he's got it, but I, know, thought he was gonna, I thought he was going to catch it. He had one foot on the track, but you know, actually, you know, even on that play, I think the, the better play on that play was uh, Prince. Prince read it yeah. great. He did. he did. Yeah, he got, you know, he got, you know, halfway down the second. And then for whatever reason, he was able to tell that he wasn't going to catch that ball, and he took off for third. So that was a great play on Prince's part. I agree. But from up here watching it, it would have deeped me. I, I yeah. would have stopped at second, thinking he was going to catch it. <laughs> Mac, we could have used your last inning. That's a one, two, three frame. We got the defense in hand. Three, three, the score. Park, the Rangers will host a blood drive from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Texas Rangers Hall of Fame. That's inside Globe Life Park. For donor center locations or to uh, find other community blood drives, just visit carterbloodcare.org. Well, the Rangers come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning, a 3-3 ball game. It'll be Leonis Martin, Robinson Chirinos, and Hanser Alberto to face Mike Pelfrey. Martin, an RBI single, his first trip to the plate. That got the uh, first run home for the Rangers in the second inning. 
Leonis now 20 runs driven in. And he's going to bunt his way aboard. Belfry flips and gets it. Belfry knew exactly how much time he had. Didn't hurry himself. And he nipped uh, Leonis at first by a step and a half. Well, Belfry coming into this game had had four starts where his ERA was 0 0.96. Rangers have roughed him up a little bit today and it could have been a lot worse if they didn't turn three double plays one to end each of the first three innings. Pelfer is on a great run. Well, one away here's Chirinos and Robinson grounded into one of those double plays that Tom was just talking about. Fouls that first pitch off to the right nothing in one. Robinson a 190 average as he faces Pelfrey. The big right hander rocks and deals and gets the off speed pitch over. Torino's making his 39th start of the year behind the plate. This is the uh, Rangers 62nd game of the year. Rangers have gone 20 and 18 in Torino's first 38 starts. Jeff Bannister likes the uh, catching tandem the way it's been set up with Torinos and Corporat. Our Kubota power stats uh, talking about Mike Pelfrey. Fourth in the American League with that 228 earned run average coming in to play today. Last four starts. It's been really good. Matter of fact, this is the first outing in the last four starts, last five starts that he has given up more than one run. And Torinos drops that one in fair territory down the right field line. And uh, Rosario able to get there before Torinos can turn it in to an extra base hit. But Rangers are kind of peppering that, <laughs> that part of the ballpark down there. All manner of hits dropping in. Well, when you're struggling, this feels like a line drive, I'll tell you that. It's a little blooper, but Robinson was two for 20 before that little blooper. And Kind of gets the weight of the world off your shoulders. At least you on base with a base hit. Relax and maybe you just take off from there. Yeah, for Torinos, that snapped an 0 for 12. And we saw Delano to Shields in a pretty pretty much of an offensive downturn. Have a check swing double down that line earlier. They got the rally going last inning. It did. Here's Hanser Alberto taking strike one. Alberto ground ball to second. As he let off that third inning. It was after Alberto's ground out, the Rangers opened the floodgates up. And four consecutive hitters reached base, or five consecutive reached base, two of them scoring. Line drive over the leap of Dozier in the right center field for a base hit. Torinos will stop at second. And Hanser Alberto with a solid line drive safety. Fourth straight inning, the Rangers had a little something going. Hopefully, this one won't. Won't end in a double play. High pitch, middle of the plate. Good swing by Hanser. Going right back through the middle with it. Dozier's playing a couple steps too low. He's playing higher. He's got that. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to pull that ladder out. <laughs> No, two on with one out. Now back to the top of the order. Delino to Shields. We had that check swing double in the third. One for two today. And the time call. Pelfrey taking a little too long reading the signs from Chris Herman. Delino at 264 after that two bagger. And a good rip of that high fastball. Nothing in one. And the Rangers this afternoon, three runs on nine hits against Mike Belfry. And Belfry, as we said, had really been throwing the ball well. ERA had dropped down to fourth best in the American League. And the Shields rips one to left center field. That is up the alley, headed for the wall. It is off the wall. Torino scores. Here comes Alberto, and he gets the stop sign oh. and is able to scamper back to third. But 
Delano to Shields unties the ball game with the RBI double, and the Rangers lead it four to three. Tony Beasley is doing a great job coaching third base today. <laughs> he waved, waved Delino in the first time. That pitch is up, not even a strike. Delino gets his hands in, almost hit him out of the ballpark. But watch Tony Beasley as he's waving the runners around if you get a chance to see it. He's going to try to wave in the second run. You see Hanser coming around third. He's waving him in, waving him in. Nope, stop. <laughs> I never coached third base, but that must be the tough one where you've got two runners and you're the second runner. You're waving one. You got to decide what to do with the second one. <laughs> That's crazy. No, Rangers back on top now. And Shinsu Chu, a chance to uh, put them further out in front, takes inside for on the inside corner, I should say, for strike one. Chu, a pair of singles, drove in his 30th run of the year with his single in the third inning. Got the infield for the Twins pulled all the way in. Alberto at third, DeShields at second. One ball and one strike. You know, a good third baseman, good third base coach is kind of like a like a good umpire. If an umpire has a great game behind the plate, no one even notices, no one mentions anything. Same with a third base coach. If he makes all the right decisions, no one notices it. But you mess one up and it stands out like a sore <laughs> thumb and the fans will let you know about it. So Tony's having a good game so far. Waving runners or stopping runners. Inside two and one. Yeah, there are not too many places out there to hide for a third base coach. He's got to decide what to do on the first one. Now he's got to pick up the second runner, which he does. He tells him to stop. Looks like a simple thing, but I bet it's not. No, the best thing he did, he got himself in position. You saw him waving Torinos around the whole time. Uh -huh. And as he's waving Torinos, he's moving down the line because he knows he's got to give himself some room to, number one, read the play, and then also see where Alberto is in relation to the ball when it's coming back in. So, right. outstanding job. Uh, Chu now with a three-ball, one-strike count. Jinsu hitting in a pretty good spot because he has the big man to follow. That is Prince Fielder. Belfry at check of the runners. And Chu pops it foul to the left side. This is a big at bat right here for Punch Rodriguez. He picked Chu. What, Chu, his player in the yeah, game right yeah. here? Yeah, he's got two. Yeah. He's got two hits already. He's got second <laughs> and third right now. I think Pudge even knows that he picked Chu. Uh... <laughs> I won't even tell you how he picked him. I won't even say it. Okay. <laughs> well, we know he picked him. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. Belfry with a payoff pitch. High ball four. That loads him up. And here comes Prince. Well. Now with Fielder coming up, how about our T-Mobile game changer today with the bases loaded. Prince uh, this year is second in the American League with a 421 average runners in scoring position. Six hits in his last 15 times in the plate at home in those situations. And he's got a whole bunch of them out there. He's got three teammates, one on each sack. Well, the top of the order, first four guys in the lineup have seven hits a walk in this ball game. Two hits for Delino, two for Shinsu. Prince already has two hits, and Mitch has an RBI double. They are ground out there in the uh, bullpen for the Twins. Right now, it's Mike Pelfrey, and he's got his hands full. Prince Fielder, and Tom mentioned the three home runs that Fielder has in his career against Pelfrey. And the Rangers have Alberto at third, Delano to Shields at second, Shinsu Chu at first, and one out. Rangers threatening to break this thing wide open. Pelfrey will work from the stretch. Brown ball cut off by Vargas to second. They get one. The return is not in time. 
Fielder able to outleg the return throw into score is Alberto. And it's a 5-3 Ranger League. Boy, the Twins almost turned their fourth double play to get out of another huge jam. They had time to do it. But the throw back to first base was a good throw. They turned the double play. The Rangers are really being aggressive at the play. They're going up there. They like that first pitch. They're hacking at it, and they're hitting it hard. A few of them have been right at, at, uh, at the Twins' defense, but, hey, I like the aggressiveness, aggressiveness they're showing at the plate. The fielder with his 43rd RBI of the year. Rangers now with runners at the corners, two outs, and Mitch Moreland up there, who has an RBI double to his credit today. One ball, no strikes. Moreland well, laying off that breaking ball. Buzz, this is one of those innings that you talked about where a pitcher throws a lot of pitches and might be right on the verge of making a mistake right here. Yeah, Pelfrey may uh, end up wishing he'd been able to get that double play turned. You throw a few more pitches and, yeah, your chances of making a mistake are pretty high. It's already cost him one run. 1-0 pitch to Moreland. Ooh. <laughs> that one back. Look, almost went down on one knee like Adrian. Yeah, you know, I was always told never to leave your feet when you swing. <laughs> right. at, least, at least not both up at the same time. Maybe not. Maybe that's maybe that's old school. I don't know. Well, I know one thing. That ball's not the only way that ball is going to get over Escobar's head now is if it's going to be in the seats. <laughs> He's moved back about 20 feet this time for Mitch's That's an unusual that. alignment against the left hand hitter where the yeah. left fielder is deeper than the right fielder. That's a little bit inside, two and one. Any well, further I've back? Ever, and... ever seen a left fielder play a left hand hitter out there? No. Oh. Escobar's going to need a ticket here in another, another couple of feet back. This one would dump one right in front of him for a run. Two and one to Moreland. Belfry checking over at first where Prince Fielder is. Now at third. And Moreland a drive. Deep to right field. It is going. Goodbye. That's what we're talking about, Buzz. Double play across Pelfrey in the twins. Four runs. They turn that double play with the bases loaded. They're out of the inning. As it was, they didn't, and a run scored. And then Mitch hits a three run homer. They turned three. They needed four. It cost them four runs. And Pretty well centered that one up. So Moreland with his eighth home run of the year. And he has had back-to-back -back big nights for the Rangers. He's driven Mike Prelfrey out of the ball game. So a pitching change underway here at Globe Fly Park. And it's in front of ecstatic Ranger fans. We'll be back right after this.
Black and uh, Megan Rapinoe and the USA Women's National Team continue their quest for a third World Cup title as they finish group stage play against Nigeria. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. Central on your local Fox station and gets the whole tournament streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now, J.R. Graham has entered uh, a ball game in a rather less than enviable situation. Rangers have put five on the board here in the fourth inning. They have driven Mike Pelfrey from the game, and Graham summoned to see if he can get the last out of the inning. Graham made one spot start for the Twins. No record of 263 earned run averages, his 17th game overall. And dealing to Joey Gallo as a very light rain starts to fall here at Globe Life Park. Matt, did you ever, when you started playing, were the players wearing their socks like this with the sanitary socks underneath the stirrup socks? Very few guys did. It there was still some Yeah, there that? was still some that way. <laughs> Joey Gallo launches one. Goodbye. Wow. That's one of the longer ones in this ballpark. Yes, it is. That's over Barry Bonds here and only about five rows further up. I don't think he can hit one unless it goes in the second deck. <laughs> well, he hit that one where most people can't hit one. Mitch could probably hit one out there. Hey, watch that though. His third big league home run, and that is a no-doubter. Fastball. <laughs> Even the veterans are yeah. excited about that one. Yeah. <laughs> you start getting some of those guys that have been around for a while saying, wow, you know you've done something. Anyway, those are the socks we were talking about. You can see the TC on the side of them, the white socks underneath the stirrup socks. That used to be. Traditionally, the only way you wore your socks. Gallo knocking those socks right off. Well, I got to think based on that swing, that's right exactly where he likes it. His happy spot? Yeah. I think it yeah. was. That is it. Elvis playing off a breaking ball. It's two and nothing. No, a 9-3 Ranger lead. They put a six spot on the board here in the fourth inning. And Elvis a chopper out to short. Nunez across the diamond. That'll do it. But the Rangers said nine men to the plate. Six of them score. We'll go to the fifth inning here in Globe Live Park as Mitch Moreland and Joey Gallo go back to back. Moreland a three-run blast. Gallo a solo launch. Twins coming up in the fifth, trailing nine to three to the Rangers.
Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by the Mazda 6. J.D. Power has awarded the Mazda 6 highest-ranked vehicle appeal among mid-sized cars. Well, what a turn of events. Last time Kobe Lewis went out to the mound, it was a 3-3 ball game. And he sent the uh, Twins down in order, and that set the stage for the Rangers' six-run uprising in the fourth inning. And uh, in between innings, Dennis Klein and uh, the crew chief of this umpiring crew, Hunter Windelstadt, checking the radar on uh, Dennis's smartphone to see what uh, what might transpire. Get three quick outs right here, and it can rain all at once. And Colby gets the first one as he gets the strikeout of Brian Dozier, one away. You know, all those runs are earned. And with the bases loaded, Prince hit the ball to first base. Vargas got the ball to the shortstop on a nice pickup and a nice throw. Nunez's throw back to first was wide, and Pelfrey couldn't hang on to it. If they turned that double play, which it looked like they were going to, it would have been their fourth double play. They would have been out of the inning, and it would have been a 4-3 to three game. As it turned out after that, Prince got an RBI on that play, and the Rangers ended up scoring five more runs. <laughs> and they're all earned because that wasn't an error. No, and Pelfrey has himself to blame for that, Tom. He didn't get to the to first base and set up like a first baseman. Is that what it was? Yeah, he was trying to search for the bag with his right foot. He got the far end of the bag, never had a chance to go back and make a catch on the throw. I didn't think the throw was that bad if he'd if he'd been set up properly. Uh -huh. But Rangers took advantage of it. That's the uh, important thing. Oh and two is the count to Eddie Rosario. We get a little better look at that on the ball that Fielder hit. Delfrey's getting over there. He had time to get to the bag and set himself up. But he he never got his body turned. He never got his foot planted on the bag the way a first baseman would. And to square himself up to the throw. So he was trying to reach back as his body was headed toward the outfield. Okay. If that throw if that throw was on the bag and waist tight, it would have been a routine play. Not many good thoughts going through Pelfrey's mind right about now. No. Another 0-2 pitch. Rosario today had a very big two-run double in the third inning. His was the first of back-to-back -back run scoring doubles for the Twins. Little looper out in the shallow center going out and making the call as Hanser Alberto. Two gone. And let's go over to Jim Knox. I understand he's up there in uh, Gallo territory. Must have gotten a helicopter to get up there that quick. Yeah, I think so, Tom. 461 feet right here. The ball landed eight rows back here in the upper home run porch. Now, Sandy, you actually it, it had hit off your hand, right? And got a little cut on your hand. I catch it, and it hit my finger and uh, glanced. Glanced back here on the chair. Then all of a sudden, someone gave you the ball. So that's pretty nice there. Nice souvenir right there. What happened to you? Why didn't you get I this I missed one? it. I, I honestly missed it. She ducked. Uh, she reached her hand up. She's the one that got it. She was yeah. almost, almost got it. Right, for now on, when Joey Gallo hit, she got has got to bring a glove up here, okay? All right, there we go. All right, good to see you. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah, it. Or a chest protector. <laughs> 461, uh, what the reading here in the ballpark is, and I have a feeling that uh, when StatCast gets a hold of that, we're going to have a, you know, a little adjustment to it. Well, Colby Lewis gets a couple of strikeouts, another one, two, three inning. Colby with six punch outs. Halfway through the game, Rangers by six.
Bronny hit what he saw from uh, J.R. Graham in our Coors Timeless Moment. Take you back to June 13th of 1994. Jose Canseco with a three home run night, including one that measured 480 feet. And that since has been turned the uh, second longest home run in the Globe Live Park history. Josh Hamilton, the longest, it was uh, 491. Leonis Martin, who began the fourth inning by uh, trying to butt his way aboard, was thrown out. Nothing in one. We'll flash back to that Jose Canseco <laughs> game. That ball hit off. Well, that's not, that's not, that's not the 480. Oh, wow. There's the, no, that was in the back the, of the, uh, back of the seats. That's not the 480. Martin rounds one to Nunez for out number one. The one that went 480 hit about eight, eight feet up, six feet up on the back of the bullpen wall. That's not the same wall that's there now. Right. The wall back then was a lot farther. Well, I don't know how much farther, 10 feet farther back maybe. The bullpens were configured differently back then. Mm -hmm. That ball, if he hit it today, would have been up on the concourse. Hit it pretty much about the same direction to left field that Joey Gallo hit his to right yeah, field. That's right. Light. Okay, that is the one that went off the back wall. Oh my goodness, that's just crazy. <laughs> I'd like to see where Joey's would have gone if he hit it right handed to left field. It probably would have been. I don't know if it would have been far enough to go on the concourse or whether it would have gone in the corner of the upper deck there. You get a better view of how far it goes if it, if it had gone to left field. You know, what was funny about that is watching the left fielder's reaction. He just stood and turned around. <laughs> he just, yeah, he just, he just stood there and turned around and watched. Didn't take a step, nothing. He <laughs> yeah. just wanted to see how far it was going to go, too. <laughs> mm. That's when you know somebody's crushed one when the yep. outfielder doesn't move. I mean, it's one thing to run back and, you know, make it look like you've got a shot. But when you have absolutely no shot, that outfielder's just <laughs> going to stand and turn. on your hip. Yeah. He becomes a spectator. Wow. Yeah, we probably will see several of those in the so. near future from that guy. Robinson Torinos, one out of two. And a single to start off that six-run rally in the fourth. Up there now with a count of two balls and two strikes. And he drives one to deep left field. Back is Escobar at the wall. It's off the wall. Torino digging for second is in with a slide. I mentioned that Robinson had been struggling going into his last at bat. He was two for 20. Got the little blooper to right field. And maybe that just lets him relax. And get right back in the swing of things. Got a hanging slider, it looked like. Almost got it out of here. Needed to hit it a little bit higher. Now that's what's uh, what's going good for the Rangers right now. Chirinos with that little blooper to right field for the hit. Then he follows it up with a ring double. The liner to Shields had the little check swing double to right. His first time up, or his second time up, and then rifled one to left center for the double. That's right. Each one of those hits was yeah. the hit that started the rally. <laughs> that's right. And Hanser Alberto to center field. Robinson makes the catch, and uh, Torinos will stay put. That is out number two, and uh, Delino Shields coming up. Before we tell you about Delino, let's send it over to Aaron Hardigan for a Mazda game break. Right, Aaron, thank you. You know, Delino coming to the plate. Back-to-back -back doubles for the uh, Speedy Ranger leadoff man. Had an RBI, too. He has now driven in a dozen for the year. Got Robinson Torinos at second base. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth. One ball, no strikes. A 
No, the liner now three for seven in this series so far. He has scored four runs in the first two games against the Twins. One and one. Back to getting on base and doing what a leadoff guy does. That's crossing home plate. He's been great at it. Uh, you know, he finds a way to get on base. He talked about the blooper, his second at bat for, for a knock, and then driving in one with a double in the uh, left field gap. He finds a way to get on base, and once he's on there, those guys behind him, Chu, Prince, Beltre, Moreland, they're driving him in. You know, look right down the left field line, our RF camera that roams around Globe Live Park, gives you some great looks. Two and one out of the Shields. J.R. Graham getting set as the sign he wants. The 3 1 pitch. And a full count. And the Rangers with nine runs on 13 hits. And gone on an extra base hit binge here this afternoon. A couple of uh, home runs and you know, four doubles. Graham wants Chris Herman to recycle the signs. Payoff pitch on the way. Inside ball four. Well, let's take you back to in uh, Delano DeShield scored his second run of the day. You look at this shoot, drills one to right field and the Shields wasn't sure if it was going to be caught in right, and he comes around third. He's slowing up, not thinking he's going to score. But I tell you, Beasley is the one who read that play, saw the ball going into the cutoff man at second base, and then just started waving Delino. And I mean, you, you've got to give Tony Beasley credit for that that run there. He saw the ball going into second base instead of coming toward home, and he put that uh, that go sign on for the Shields. And fortunately, the Shields was watching him. Yeah, he was able to pick it up. Yeah, good teamwork. Well, first and second with two out, Shinsu Chu. A perfect afternoon. Two for two with a walk. He has driven in a run and scored a run. This one's hit deep to left center field. Up the alley going back is Robinson. He can't get it. It's off the wall. Torino scores. The Shields will score. Chu in the second, a two run double. It's 11 to three Ravens. They are swinging it today, aren't they? Boy, there's been a lot of balls launched to that left field gap out there. Both teams, meaning that the Twins scored, they had a couple hit out there as well. But Chu's got good power to left center field. And Robinson just not able to get back that far that quickly. And uh, Chu with his third hit of the day. Now has driven in three. He has 32 for the year. He is in scoring position. Prince Fielder has two hits and an RBI. Graham missing a little bit low with the off speed pitch. Well, Prince had the RBI that made it a five to three Ranger lead before all the fireworks from Moreland and Gallo. His was the uh, ground ball that could have been a double play but wasn't turned by the Twins. Brian Dunsing, the left-hander, loosening in the Twins pin. One ball and one strike. Fielder to center field. That is right at Robinson. And that will do it. Rangers put uh, two more on the board. They strand one. 11 to 3 Rangers. Mac, thanks for joining us. We'll see you after the ball game on Rangers Live. All right.
Fan Express rolling in from the big town of Austin, Texas. You bet. On board, plenty of Ranger fans. Courtesy of 104.9 The Horn, uh, Gary Green works at 104.9 The Horn. Uh, you guys have a good bus ride over? Yeah, we had a great bus, bus ride up here. Uh, our driver, Eddie, took great care of us. Everybody, of we have a good time, guys. Yeah. 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 fans enjoying the day then, right? Absolutely. We got a guy here, 24 years, City of Austin Public Works. He's retiring, enjoying the Rangers this afternoon. There we afternoon. go. Good retirement party for you. All right, congratulations. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks, guys. Meantime, uh, Trevor Plouf going after uh, Colby Lewis early in the count and grounds out to a well-positioned uh, Hanser Alberto. Well, Colby now has retired 10 straight since uh, the rough streak. And Colby had a stretch of four hitters where nothing went well. He did. <laughs> and since then, he's retired 10 straight. And before that, he'd given up one hit. Yeah, after that stretch of four hitters, Buzz, nobody out. In the third inning, he struck out the side. Yeah. Three straight batters. Yeah. Vargas a rip. Oh. <laughs> Andrew Alberto, he's shown us a, a couple of times now over the last two days how to uh, <laughs> get out of the way and still catch the ball. Yeah, yesterday, he kind of sidestepped the ball like a matador and caught a one-hop smash. This time, it's a one-hop smash. Kind of sits down, oh. reaches back to his left, and makes the play. He's got some hands, boy. Yes, he does. <laughs> kind of had a little cheapish little grin on his face when he got up, and that's all right. So very quickly, two outs. Eduardo Nunez now will step in. Nunez, a ground ball and a strikeout. And Colby pumping in strike one. Nunez, a 288 hitter. Colby with his 70th pitch of the afternoon. One ball and one strike. Colby, 51 strikes, 19 balls. Slow chopper, Gallo, going to be a tough play. Oh, oh, what a play by Joey Gallo. Boy, have yourself an afternoon, man. young man. That's a play we, he hasn't had a chance to make since he's been here. And he showed the big guy has some agility. That he has. So five and a half in the books. Joey Gallo putting an ex one exclamation point on the sixth inning for the Twins. 11 to 3 Rangers. Today's jackpot is $400 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during this inning, Richard Wood of Dallas will win $400. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Richard's going to win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Well, the 
Rangers have already had some slams get out of the ballpark here. Haven't had a grand slam yet. We can always uh, always hope for that. Mitch Moreland slammed one his last time. A three-run blast to the back of the lower home run porch. He's facing Brian Dunsing, the uh, veteran left-hander. Dunsing appearing in his 24th outing of the year. Out of play off Moreland's bat. No balls and two strikes. Mitch, a double and a home run. Four runs driven in. Now is up to 30 RBI. It was Dunsing in the game last night when Mitch hit that ball to center field. Listening to the uh, post-game interviews, and Mitch said he was just trying to get something uh, up in the strike zone from Dunsing last night, and he got it. And in the fourth inning, he got something up in the strike zone from Mike Pelfrey and left the ballpark with it. Down on the count here, no balls and two strikes. Now one and two. Now Mitch, the average at 314. And that uh, that doesn't reflect the change. The bottom numbers there don't reflect the change with uh, the extra hit that Mitch was given last night. He's gone on strikes here. That ball that was scored an error originally last night turned into a two-run double for Warren. So the numbers are... Take a look at our AT&T U-verse Rewind. Take you back to the fourth inning. The next man up after Mitch, Joey Gallo. And uh, he headed toward the exit. Came up a row short. The longest, 461 feet, the measurement in the ballpark. And I would imagine that'll be adjusted upwards once they put StatCast on it. Kind of like to see what the exit velocity was, too, in that thing. Yeah. Coming off the bat. Yeah. That'll be that'll be an interesting tool to have after a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to kind of verify who the guys in the league are that hit the ball the hardest. We'll have those numbers and after a period of time. They'll mean something. Yeah. Get a database built up yeah. and be right. able to compare them directly. Right now we have some isolated numbers. You have a kind of an idea what that exit velocity means. A ball and a strike to Gallup. Ooh. Dunson kind of flirting with fire down there. It's pretty much in the wheelhouse of Joey Gallo. Gallo, along with his solo home run, has walked twice, once intentionally. And he has scored a couple of runs today. That number three in our Fox tracker right down there at the uh, bottom of the strike zone, down and into a left-hander, usually is no good. Now Joey Gallo's home run. You've got the speed coming off uh, off the bat on this time. What do you think it was? That's got to be over 110. I got to say like 112. Yeah, I'm going to go with 107. And M's going M's going to play too. I'm going to say 116. Okay. Who's closest without oh. going over? Buzz. Huh. How about that? Boy, you know how hard those balls must have been hit that were, what were they, 117 or 119? 120, 120 was uh, Stanton. Stanton. And 119 was uh, Cruz's Cruz. ball against the Rangers. Wow. And that was a single. That goes to show you how, how hard they must have been hit. Two balls, two strikes. Dunsing to Gallo. Check swing. Did he go? No, he did not. And on appeal down to Hunter Windelstad at third. So the count is full. Good call. Well, Gallo back in there trying to get aboard here in the uh, sixth inning. Elvis Andrews. You see down there at the bottom of your screen waiting in the on-deck circle. Payoff pitch to Gallo. Laid off the breaking ball. 
Kowalski, his third walk of the afternoon to go along with a home run. Well, that's that's a very important attribute for a hitter like Joey to have the ability to lay off those close pitches because he's going to be the kind of hitter that pitchers are going to go out of their way not to group strikes to him. They're going to try to pitch around him eventually. They're going to give him tough breaking balls. And the way you counteract that is exactly what he's done today. Just lay off him, make him get the ball up and throw you a strike. That's a great quality to have. Still a young hitter, still learning. They've done a great job of that today. One of them was an intentional walk, but two of them, he earned, he earned it. Well, yeah, Elvis shoots one the other way. Gallo leaps out of the way of it, and Andrews has his first hit of the afternoon. And speaking of Elvis, a good time for us to remind you that the uh, 2015 Garden Home giveaway continues tomorrow. The first 15,000 fans will get an Elvis Andrews stolen base gnome courtesy of Coca-Cola. Visit TexasRangers.com or call 972-RANGERS for tickets. Well, the Ranger onslaught continues here. The last uh, five innings now, the Rangers have not gone quietly whatsoever. They put one on the board in the second, two in the third, six in the fourth, two in the fifth. They're looking for more here with runners at first and second for Leonis Martin. They kind of warmed up in the first inning. They had two men on and then hit into a double play before they could score. Martin and RBI single in the second inning. Got Gallo at second, Andrews at first. Dunsing a check. And Dunsing's going to try to turn it over. That is the fourth double play turned by the Twins here this afternoon. And the Rangers are gone. They're held scoreless in the sixth. On to the seventh we go, 11 to 3, Texas. game summary has been an offensive one. Rangers uh, in the fourth inning. It was 3-3 when the inning started. Delino the Shields untied it. And then with the big blast, Mitch Marlins to right, a three-run home run followed very quickly by an even longer blast off the bat of Joey Gallo. His third home run as a major leaguer. That one measured at a conservative 461 feet. And that was on the way to uh, an 11 to 3 lead that the Rangers have. And right now, uh, Mike Maddox and Matt Lucero, the assistant trainer for the Rangers, out to check on Colby Lewis, as is Bob Davidson. Home plate umpire, and everybody's satisfied that uh, Colby's okay. Maybe he just wanted some company out there. Got some dark clouds in center field. Yeah. Now, Colby going to work now here in the seventh. And he deals a strike to Chris Herman. And Colby's now thrown 72 pitches, 53 strikes. <laughs> wow. 
He's only thrown 19 balls all afternoon. Mentioned before the game, it's coming off two solid starts. There's the pitch count. Two solid starts coming into this game, and that he'd never secured a win against the Twins. This is three straight solid starts, and has a good chance to get that win today. I like his chances. <laughs> I do too. One ball, two strikes to Herman. And he saw Colby that one inning, the third inning, and for an inexplicable region reason, four straight hitters reached base, and three of them scored. And then Colby just slammed the door shut. He retired the next 10 that he faced. Make that the next 12 that he faced. Half a dozen strikeouts today for Colby. Two balls and two strikes, and Giovanni Geyer says, that's enough. Go ahead and hit the ball the other way one time. Colby back up on top. Herman waiting. Leading off the top of the seventh inning. I'm not a weatherman, but it feels like we're going to get some rain. Yeah, the winds switched around a couple of times in the clouds, as you can see out there over the center field office complex and also over left field. Pretty foreboding. Two two. Now full count. What did, how did John Blake describe the little shower? He had a passing shower? Passing shower, yeah. Is, had that earlier before the game started. Payoff pitch. Panzer Alberto right. will handle that. One gone. Next will be Eduardo Escobar. Escobar has fly to center and grounded to first today. Colby missing up and in for ball one. One ball and one strike. Twins. The offense very limited today. To left field and Delano to Shields. That is out number two. Fans TCU's University Day is uh, Wednesday, July 8th. And the University Day ticket includes exciting Rangers baseball, of course, and a Texas Rangers cap in your school's colors. The first 1,000 fans at the ballpark who purchased a TCU University Day ticket receive a special TCU-themed Rangers cap. Visit TexasRangers.com slash U-Days to get your tickets and see a lineup of all University Days this season. Kobe's featuring a strike about 72% of the time right now. <laughs> what, what would you say is average? In the mid-60s? Mid well, let me... Uh, Solid average. That's a solid average. Yeah, you can. I think you can pitch effectively with that. Effectively with that. Mm -hmm. Be ahead of most guys. One-one pitch, and that is high and tight to Shane Robinson. And again, the uh, 60 strikes, 25 balls this afternoon out of 85 pitches. And again, the uh, light rain beginning to uh, fall here at Globe Life Park. Next pitch is popped up. Uh, Delino, I should say, uh, Andrew Alberto will appear up through the raindrops. And he makes the catch. Another 1-2-3 inning. That is 18 straight sent down by Kobe Lewis. 11-3 Rangers now. Let's join Chuck Morgan as he introduces God Bless America. Will you please rise as we remember the servicemen and women who are serving our country at home and around the world. Performing God Bless America today, please welcome back One Voice.
uh, tarp going down. The rain showers apparently uh, are going to be persistent for a bit. Uh, they don't expect it to last very long, but if this were golf, you'd go ahead and play through it. But uh, since we're not playing golf, the uh, tarp has come out onto the infield. And speaking of golf, on Thursday, the greatest golfers in the world converge on the Pacific Northwest as our coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins at 11 a.m. on Fox Sports 1 and continues in prime time at 7 p.m. on Fox. Plus, it's all streaming live on Fox Sports Go. And Tom, I know that you and uh, our vaunted producer, Kurt Dyker, have played up there we, a couple times. We have. We wish we didn't after it was all over. <laughs> we played up there twice, and it's an extremely challenging course. We hit, a, we hit balls there that we said, I see it. I could go get it, but I'm not wasting my I'm not wasting my time because I couldn't hit it anyway. And I've heard a lot of pros kind of complaining about it, but I think the best best way to go about it is everyone's going to be playing the same course, so shut but, up and go play it. Yeah, if they were complaining about it after practice rounds, imagine what's going to happen <laughs> after the first round when they probably hit some balls in the same place as you guys did. Yeah, it's it's a challenging course, but a beautiful, incredibly nice place to play. It will be a test, I'm sure. Well, it's been a test here, and the Twins haven't passed so far. The Rangers have taken advantage of them. Uh, the 11 to 3 is the score as we have uh, play halted here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Rangers are just coming to bat, and Colby Lewis has retired the last 15 that he has faced consecutively. And that comes on the heels of uh, Colby having a streak of four hitters, uh, the number nine hitter, and then the first three in the at the top of the order. That got on base and three of them scored in that uh, that uh, third inning that he had the uh, the rough spot and that's been it. You can put the clamps down right after the uh, RBI double by uh, Mauer had three consecutive strikeouts to shut the door in that inning and has retired the 15 in a row that we mentioned. So Colby has uh, made that stand up and the ball club has responded. The offense responded by putting eight runs on the board after that frame. So it uh, has been a great afternoon and Colby Lewis trying to get his first win over the Minnesota Twins. The only American League team that Colby has not defeated as a Ranger pitcher. And he stands a pretty good chance, I think, of breaking that streak today. Well, the uh, ground crew continuing to uh, move the tarp roll around. Not really sure what that's all about, but uh, probably going to try to anchor the center field section of that tarp down so that whatever wind comes doesn't uh, blow it around. They, oh, there they are. I see what they're doing. Well, Dennis Klein's crew, and they can uh, they can manhandle that tarp with the best of them. Well, if we were playing over to the west of the ballpark, we'd be okay. <laughs> That's a, a shot over the uh, first base stands here. And uh, unfortunately, right up above, it's kind of uh, like the black cloud following you around. It is raining and is raining pretty heavily. Well, while we have a few moments here, we're going to send you back to the studio and give you some uh, programming. The Rangers Insider Program. Sit back and enjoy that, and we'll keep you appraised of what is going on here at Globe Life Park. We'll be back. And now, please enjoy Rangers Insider.
some of the new stats broadcasting because it's very hard to explain them and you get caught up in numbers and trying to explain them and I think that it's going to be a while before the average fan that watches our game understands what war means. I couldn't even explain what some of the new stats are. It would be very difficult to do it to the fans that are listening on the air. So I, I would probably fall back to keeping it a little bit simple right now. Well, the uh, Twins have taken the field, and uh, as we get ready to get things back underway, Michael Tonkin, who we saw in last night's ball game, has uh, come out of the bullpen. He will be the pitcher now as the Rangers come to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning, leading 11 to three. And Tonkin, 13 games prior to this game, the uh, league hitting 303 against him. Tonkin worked a third of an inning in last night's ball game, gave up. A two-run single to Elvis Andrews in that uh, eighth inning. Elvis uh, out trying to go from first to second after that base hit, after the two runs and scored. So we are ready to get underway here at Globe Live Park. A rather lengthy rain delay, a lot longer than it looked like to uh, when when the tarp was first put down. It looked like it would be about uh, 15, 20 minutes, but uh, it is a little bit longer than that. So the Rangers... After a layoff coming up here in the bottom of the seventh, Robinson Chirinos, who is two for three today with a single and a double, he has scored two runs, and he takes strike one from Tonkin. Chirinos singled in the fourth and scored. He doubled in the fifth and scored. Rangers uh, grouping runs together in the second through the fifth inning. Behind third, Kloof, the throw across, and there is out number one. Yeah, nice play by Poole. Poole. Backhanded play. Took a little tricky hop. Fielded it cleanly and smoothly. Fired the ball across the diamond accurately. I was taking infield practice. Nice, easy play. No one away. Now Hanser Alberto will come up for the second, uh, the fourth time. He is one for three so far and takes that breaking ball from Tonkin for strike one. Alberto singled and scored in the fourth inning. That was the inning in which the Rangers put a six on the scoreboard and really broke this game open. It's out of play, nothing in two. Facing Michael Tonkin, a very tall right-hander, 6'7". He was about 220 pounds. He's from Southern California. He was the 30th round pick for the Twins back in the 08 draft. Still nothing in two. Duncan made his major league debut in 2013 with nine ball games at the big league level. Appeared in 25 games with the Twins last year. Had no record and a 474 earned run average. To center field, he chases Robinson back a bit, but he puts the brakes on and makes a catch. Two gone. No two up, two away here in the Rangers' seventh inning. Back to the top of the order for Delino to shoot. All right, Delino's had a great afternoon. He has gone two for three. He has scored three runs. He has driven in a run. Pair of doubles today, also a walk. That average now up to an even 270. Rangers 11 runs on 15 hits today. And this was uh, a team coming in who had had trouble scoring more than four runs in a ball game of late. The Delino now leads the team's team in run scored. With three today. Came into the game with 29. Now he has 32. One ball, one strike to the Shields. Last night's uh, six-run output by the Rangers, the first time in nine games that they have scored more than four runs. And of course, backing it up today. So once you open the door, boy, it, uh, it's pretty tough to get it closed again when the team like the Rangers playing well here at home. And swinging the bat, swinging them confidently. 
And good things have happened once again this afternoon. 2 1 pitch on the way. That will even things out. Mike Pelfrey got the start this afternoon for the Twins. He was rocked around uh, in three and two thirds innings, gave up eight runs on 11 hits. That was a guy who had come off uh, three consecutive outings where he had not given up more than a run. And Delano to Shields down on strikes. Tonkin works a 1 2 3 7. We'll move on to the eighth inning. It remains the Rangers 8 11 and the Twins 3. Known as who? The Mitch Matcher. After Mitch Moreland, right? You got the beard going after Mitch as well? Yeah, I got that black here pretty soon. <laughs> All right, well, congratulations. Here's the back. And uh, anything else you'd like to say, Mitch Matcher? Let's so wrap up the win today and get the sweep tomorrow. There we go. Sounds good. All right, congratulations there. <laughs> All right, Doxy. Yeah, we head to the uh, top of the eighth inning, and Colby Lewis Day is finished. He uh, does not come back out after the rain delay. Instead, it'll be Anthony Bass appearing in his 18th ball game, in his first in 10 days. It has been a while since we have seen Anthony out there. Last time he worked was on the 3rd of June against the uh, White Sox. He worked two and two-thirds innings on that day, and dealing to the top of the order here, Brian Dozier takes a strike. Well, so, Colby Lewis this afternoon. Go ahead, Tom. No, go ahead, Buzz. Finish what you're saying. Uh, Colby Lewis this afternoon, uh, another quality start. And we had talked about that a little bit earlier in the ballgame, the kind of run that this uh, Ranger rotation is on. That is their ninth consecutive quality start, and that's uh, tying them now with Arizona and San Diego for the longest streak of that type this year. And that pretty well tells you how consistent the uh, starting rotation has been. The defensive changes with uh, Adam Rosales coming into the ballgame to take over at second. And Hanser Alberto moving from second over to short. So Elvis Andrews out of the lineup, getting the last uh, couple of innings off. Bass back to the plate. And it's pop foul right back toward us. Matter of fact, it was on our roof. There's Colby. Great afternoon for Colby Lewis. Uh, just that one streak of four hitters that Gave him all the problems. And three hits and a walk in there. Gave up all three runs in those four hitters. Other than that, he allowed just one hit and ended up retiring the last 15 hitters that he faced. Well, Ranger rotation came into the game over the last 14 games with a 2.19 ERA. And Kobe just keeps that nice. Lengthy streak of good pitching by the rotation going. Two balls and two strikes to count to Dozier. Brian Dozier this afternoon 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Anthony Bass back to the plate. Call strike three. 
Backed him off with a hook and it caught the inside corner. You can see Dozier give a little bit of ground there. Watch as he kind of leans back just a little bit. Fooled by the pitch, not by the location, but the type of pitch. Breaking ball comes right back over the plate. Couldn't pull the trigger on it. No one out. Now Anthony Bass will face Eddie Rosario. Rosario is one for three with a two run double. And if you're Anthony as more of a long man and the Rangers go through this kind of streak that the starters have been going through. It's going to make your opportunities limited because the starters have pitched so well they're pitching late into the game. The Rangers have been winning. A lot of the games have been close so you go to your short bullpen guys at the end of the ball game your closer and the long man really doesn't get much of an opportunity. And there's times where the bullpen has been used a lot and the managers are a little reluctant to use his long man when he doesn't need to. Because he might need him the next day. So he kind of caught in between. Sometimes it's hard for a manager to figure out exactly how to get his long man the exact right amount of time. Yeah, it almost takes a game like this where it's a lopsided one way or the other with only an inning or two left. Yeah. Then he could pitch an inning today and still be ready to pitch tomorrow if he had to. One and two to Rosario. Check swing in the dirt. Did he go? No, he did not. Under Windlestad down there at uh, third saying no did not go around. Good call. The long man has to figure out a routine where he gets throwing in between opportunities to pitch in a real game and when it goes for 10 days you have to come in and get the job done. You can't say well I hadn't pitched in 10 days not my fault. You have to figure out a way to be ready for when your time comes. Manager doesn't right. want to hear that. You pitch every other day every fifth day every 10 days. You have to be ready to throw strikes and get it done. It's that old saying. A guy walks in the manager's office and said, "Hey, Skip, you know I pitch a lot better if you use me more often." <laughs> the skipper says, "If you pitch better, I'd use you more yeah. often." It's a chicken and an egg. Which came first? Well, we know which one it was for Colby. He has uh, gotten himself on a, a very positive roll. Oh, a glimpse of you, Darvish, in the dugout. And one thing that's happened this year without Darvish, without Holland, without Perez, without Harrison, is a lot of guys who otherwise might not have gotten this opportunity mm -hmm. wouldn't have had the opportunity to show the Rangers what they're capable of doing. The rotation has been terrific. And it's a rotation that I don't think anyone envisioned the five guys that are in it right now being in it. If you look back far enough before all the injuries. But it's given them an opportunity and they've taken advantage of it. A lot of things you can do with surplus starting pitchers. Yeah, it, and it's, you know, you're never really sure about somebody like uh, Chi Chi Gonzalez, for example. You, you, you have a pretty good idea what you think is going to happen, but until you really see him against big league competition in the middle of the season, you're never positive about it. Three two pitches low and Rosario draws the one out walk. And you know you and I Tom have talked a lot about. Understanding that you can pitch the big league level and you can compete at the big league level until you get there. In Chi Chi's case you're never really sure. No. No. There's not many Roger Clemens Dwight Goodens and whoever the others are that come up when they're 20 21 22 and just dominate right from the start. Yeah. Most people have to get their feet wet and have some success and gain the confidence and kind of take off from there. Yeah, Joe Maurer takes a strike. Maurer with a double and three trips. The other thing good about the depth that the Rangers are developing is they've definitely found out this year how important that depth is. Mm -hmm. Last year they I don't know that they were totally prepared for the injuries. They didn't have the depth. To draw from in the minor leagues and. That depth. Created some problems in the rotation this year. They address that, and the depth has made a huge difference. And you can plug anybody into pitch, but it's nice to be able to plug in the guys the Rangers have plugged in this year, <laughs> pitch as well as they have. Pick up a guy like Wandy Rodriguez at the end of spring training yeah. after he'd been released. And he's pitched like a top of the rotation guy. Nick Martinez has had the chance to develop after a learning process last year. Been a lot of fun to watch the starters over the last couple of weeks. 
Pitch low and into Maurer. That's two balls and two strikes. Maurer drove in his 35th run of the year with a third inning triple or double, I should say. Anthony Bass ready to work to it. Double play ground ball to Rosales. And uh, they turn it over. 4 6 3. That takes care of the Walker. And the Twins are gone in the eighth. Seven and a half in the books. Rangers 11, Twins 3. the Twins by a score of 11 to 3. This is the middle game of a three-game series between the Twins and the Rangers. They will close this one out tomorrow in a another daytime affair. A little bit of an earlier start. Two o'clock here on Fox Sports Southwest. Phil Hughes and Nick Martinez, the pitching principals in this one. Nick has been great in day games, 3-0, and and Phil Hughes struggling as of late on the road. Hopefully both of those trends will continue tomorrow. All of this great information brought to you by the fine folks at at and verse fellas. All right, Emily, thank you. Now, as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning, it will be Shinsu Chu to start things off, and he is facing the new left-hander that comes into the ball game. It's Aaron Thompson, 28-year-old southpaw, his 31st game of the year. That's right up among the league leaders in appearances. It's only 25 and two-thirds innings. The league hitting 245 against him. Thompson grew up in Houston. Still lives in the uh, Houston area. Shinsu Chu, quite a day going. He is three for three. Three RBI. He's also walked. He has scored uh, one run. And he hits this one hard to center field, but unfortunately, it's right at Shane Robinson. One swing of the bat and one hard out. Well, Prince Fielder coming up. And a quick reminder for you that on Tuesday, June 23rd, the first 15,000 fans will receive a Prince Fielder bobblehead courtesy of Dr. Pepper in Berkshires. Don't miss the first bobblehead giveaway of the season. Head to TexasRangers.com for tickets, or you can call 972-RANGERS. Rich Fielder, another multi-hit game here this afternoon. He is the major league leader in that category. First pitch to him. And he had a, a rip. Just didn't quite make contact. Fielder with 27 multi-hit games now this year.
Thompson with the 0-1 pitch. Got him in the outside corner. Prince, uh, a lot of great offensive numbers for the first part of the year. Came in with the fourth best home average in the American League at 365. That's gone up a couple of clicks. Makes the pitch just outside. Also had the second best average against right-handed pitching at 381. And uh, that didn't drop at all today. He had a couple of hits against Mike Pelfrey. One and two. Sliced into left field. Toward the line, Escobar. And that ball dropping out of play in the second row. Apparently all the folks with gloves have moved down closer to the to the action there getting <laughs> those foul balls more open space to get them now. Yeah, not as many people. There's a young man. That's Be ready. Big glove. guy. Another one two pitch coming to fielder. Didn't know he had it. Some guy lost his sunglasses. The fielder lashes one out of play down the left side. Still two and two. The fielder with his two hit afternoon. 349 the average as he uh, stands at home plate. Thompson studying the signs. He's ready to work. And a ground ball to short. Two gone. And next will be Mitch Moreland. Prince not real thrilled with uh, the outcome of that hard ground ball. Moreland, two hits this afternoon. A double and a home run. He has four RBI. That's something you'll see every ball that Prince hits sprinting right to the bag on a routine ground ball in an 11 to 3 game in the eighth inning. If you're a young player and you watch that that's leading by example. And when the veteran star of the team runs out balls like that makes it very difficult for everyone else not to follow suit. Yeah. At least it should make it very difficult for everyone else <laughs> not to follow suit. If everybody's paying attention, you know, when sometimes fans will say my little league team could have made that play. Well, most of the time that's not true. But when a fan says I could have run harder to first base than that, sometimes they're right. Yeah, they could. Yeah. And there's no reason why a big league player can't run as hard as he can to first base either. Yeah, that's the one thing that everybody can do equally well. Yeah, that's hustle. Do it all the count to Mitch. Towering pop fly into shallow left field. Long run in for Escobar. Still coming. And on the dead run, he's able to capture it. Rangers go in order. We have finished seven and a half. It is 11 to three, Texas.
your Rangers with an 11-3 lead on the Twins in the middle game. If you like your offense, you certainly got your fix of it today. Mack and Pudge will join me after the game for the post-game show to explain how this big offensive surge came about today. Plus, we head to the clubhouse and hear from Jeff Bannister and some of the guys as well as the two who are calling it, Buzz and Tom, who take us through the finish of this one. It's Rangers live post-game after the game, guys. All right, Aaron, thank you. Trevor Plouffe uh, leading off the top of the ninth inning. Rangers up by eight. Plouffe has a double in three trips to the plate, facing Anthony Bass for the first time and fouls it out of play. Bass had a walk and a double play in the uh, eighth inning. So he only faced three hitters. It'll be Plouffe, Vargas, and Nunez here in the ninth for the Twins. That is sliced out of play deep down the right side, and the count moves to nothing and two. Rangers 11 runs on 15 hits this afternoon. The uh, Twins three runs on four hits. One ball, two strikes. Probably need to be reminded that the uh, ball club came into the Rangers came into this game. Just six for their last 56 over two ball games. That's a, a 107 average. And uh, I think they answered the bell pretty well here this afternoon. I think so. And it made that uh, that six for 56 a thing in the past in, in a big way. Two balls, two strikes. Bass to the wind. Now three and two. Anthony back with a payoff pitch. To right field, Chu retreating. And just stepping onto the scissors makes the grab for out number one. Now next will be Kenny Spargas. Spargas, the big, powerful switch hitter. He's gone 0 for 3 today. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. <laughs> Vargas at 236 for the year. Three home runs and 10 driven in. The Rangers will move to the closest they've been to first place. Game and a half after the games today. Yeah, they have not been a game and a half back since the 14th of April. Wow. Or, I'm sorry, the 19th of April. Mitch Moreland will take the, to the bag himself. And the Rangers now are just one out away from wrapping up victory number 33. Now, the Rangers on, uh, after the games on April the 19th were in fifth place, but they were only a game and a half back. And that is the last time that they were less than two games out of first place. Now Houston has gone three and eight. The Rangers have gone seven and four over the last 11 games. That's helped close the gap. Eduardo Nunez takes outside for ball one. Nunez, two ground outs and a strikeout. And a fly ball to right. That's going to send Chu back. Still going back. That ball is off the top of the wall. And Nunez, showing you some pretty good pop the other way, came within probably an inch or so of hitting that ball out. And Paul Molitor is going to come out and uh, talk to Bob Davidson. He's probably going to want to see if the umpires will review that. And... Uh, get a look at uh, whether that ball went out of the ballpark. We've seen that happen before with the right field wall here where the ball hit right on the edge and with the padding up there it uh, kind of bounces back the way it would off the back wall. That looked like it hit the front wall and bounced back softly. Yep right off the corner of the padding. Hey, did it get the corner of the padding? Sometimes there's a little piece of um, wood behind that. 
a brace behind it. You're pretty tough to see there. Yeah, but I couldn't it, see it. Yeah. You see those wooden braces behind it. It's possible to go over the fence and come back, but I think if it hit one of them, it would have skipped toward the railing in front of the fans and bounced back. Coming right down. Yep, yeah. right on top corner. Yep. That's the side. We've had another one like that this year. Yep. Needed about an inch. Exact same thing. Well, they'll take a look at that and uh, give us a ruling here in pretty short order, I would imagine. And the crew chief, Hunter Windelstadt. And the folks here at uh, Globe Life Park getting a, a shot at it, too. Eduardo Nunez out at second base, and he's hoping for, you know, a reversal of that to give him a home run. Well, that's why Paul Molitor went out there to try to get his player a home run instead sure. of a double with two outs. It doesn't really matter whether he's on second base or whether he gets a home run as far as the game goes. They're going to have to have a whole bunch of hitters score, get up and score, which would have moved him around anyway. So that part, as far as the game is concerned, doesn't matter, but sticking up for your player and trying to get him a home run that's part of a manager's job Here's another look at it and right at the corner of that padding or the padding meets the uh, wood back there the wood fence itself Boy, I, it's hard to see what made it come back toward the field it looks like it's it looks like it's past the, the top of the padding yeah i think that's what, what, what you're talking what about did it hit? well with the, there's there's the wood? wood behind it the wood fencing and I think where the padding hits the wood is where they, the ball yeah, came down. Had, you're right. It had, it had to hit right, right where the wood hit the padding. Instead of being the front of the padding and coming back. Boy, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. In any event, it doesn't make much difference. Except to maybe Nunez. But yeah. he's still got, not like he lost a hit or anything. Got an extra base hit. Still got a double. Yeah. His first one of the day. Oh, he's at second base, still two out, and Chris Herman up. He is 0 for 2 today, having been hit by a pitch, a fly out, and a ground out. Twins now with five base hits. Matters to Anthony Bass, though. If he strands him right there, he pitch a shutout inning. Well, that's going to take doesn't. care of the shutout because that ball is going to rattle off the wall. In to score is Nunez. In to second is Chris Herman with the RBI double. And it's an 11 to 4 Ranger lead. Well, oh, Chris Herman driving in his eighth run of the year. In the middle of the plate, down above knee high, and that's uh, not good territory. Third double of the year for Chris Herman. Eduardo Escobar. Now comes to the plate, and the switch hitter takes ball one. Escobar, a fly ball to center, ground ball to first, and a fly ball to left. Up the middle, that's into center field, a base hit. Herman will score from second base, and it's an 11 to 5 Ranger lead. Is uh, Anthony Bass having trouble getting that last out? Well, Escobar drives in his 22nd run of the year. Mike Maddox going out to the mound to uh, see if he can give Anthony Bass a, a little help. He's uh, focused back on making quality pitches. Last two times, last three hitters. He's gotten the ball pretty much in the middle of the plate. And the uh, Twins have taken advantage of it. Now Shane Robinson, the number nine man in the order. Robinson one for three, had a, a single in the third inning and scored. 
Escobar is taking off for second base. He'll have to retrace his steps on the foul ball. Bass ready for the 0 1 pitch. One ball, one strike with Escobar taking second on defensive indifference. Line drive by Gallo down the left field line. Coming in to score is Escobar. Into second is Shane Robinson. So four consecutive two out hits. And the Twins have put three on the board. It's now an 11 to 6 game. In action uh, in the Ranger bullpen, getting a little more heated out there. Second baseman Brian Gozer. I think just getting a few balls in the zone that he's trying to stay away from. That's the hitter zone near the middle of the plate. Twins hitters had a couple of good pitches to hit in that streak of four straight batters. Shane Robinson with his third double and his 10th uh, run driven in. And Brian Dozier now up there. And a check swing for ball one. Phantom Ken giving you a look at the uh, vibration on that. On that uh, looping line drive. One ball, no strikes. Dozier an 0 for 3 officially this afternoon. A couple of strikeouts and a ground ball to third. He's also walked and scored. 259 average. Ahead in the count now. Two balls and a strike. John Edwards up and throwing, and he's joined by Sean Tollison. And uh, I'm sure Jeff Bannister had gone into this inning saying well we just have Anthony Bass finish out this uh, ball game and not have to disturb our bullpen anymore. And sometimes the best laid plans don't work out the way you had in mind. Yeah then a couple more batters reach base it's going to be a save opportunity. Yeah. Three and one to Dozier. The left field the Shields can't see it and it's down for extra bases. Delino completely lost that ball. So into second is Dozier, an RBI double. That cuts the lead to 11 7. And this, Shane Robinson scores. This is the time of night where the sun on a line drive is directly in the left fielder's face. It's not quite as bad on a high fly, but any ball that's hit like that on a line goes right straight in the sun and doesn't come out because the sun is setting right behind the stadium. And you can have two pair of sunglasses on. You're not going to be able to see that ball. Just nothing you can do. Once it goes in the sun, it doesn't come out. It, that one didn't come out. No, that's going to force Jeff Bannister to go out to the mound, remove Anthony Bass, and call in John Edwards. Well, Anthony Bass got within a strike a couple of times of uh, finishing out the ninth inning, but ends up giving up five consecutive two-out hits. And he will leave in favor of John Edwards. So... A pitching change in progress here at Globe Life Park. We're back after this short timeout on Fox Sports Southwest.
Yeah, a big tall right-hander John Edwards on now. See if he can't get that final out here in the ninth inning. Edwards pressed into service, and uh, this is his ninth outing of the year. Now with a 675 earned run average, opponents hitting an even 300 against him. Going to Eddie Rosario. He has missed outside with a couple of pretty good fastballs, but it's 2-0. Oh. You know, it's impossible to know what the players are thinking, but I do know what Delano DeShields is thinking right now. Please don't hit a line drive to me. <laughs> Yeah, he's still you can see him. He's that sunshine right straight in his eyes. Yeah, having to put his glove up just to see the pitch. And the pitch inside spins Rosario around and it's ball three about to become a save opportunity. Yes, it is. One more base runner and it will be a save opportunity. Cody Lewis. Trying to figure out what in the world happened. That is. In there for a strike, it's three and one. Rosario this afternoon has uh, had a two run double. That was back in the third inning. He's also walked one for three. Dozier away from second. And John Edwards, he's saying here, he's my best stuff. Now three and two. Standing, getting behind John Edwards, trying to encourage him to shut the door right here. Rolled over to first base, a foot race. Edwards gets the throw from Morgan and steps on first, and that is a winner. Now, a little more difficult than uh, what the Rangers had hoped for in the ninth inning, but they do get the W. That's two in a row now over the Twins. 11 to seven is the final, and it took a very good play. By Mitch Moreland and John Edwards it turned into a pretty close play. Mitch had to lead John perfectly as he comes across the base just ahead of the step of the runner, Rosario. Well, the That's Twins do come up with four runs in that ninth inning, but they fall four short. Colby Lewis gets his sixth win of the year and his first ever over the uh, Minnesota Twins. First